Um, I want to be careful not to. <laughs> that would be terrific. Thank you. Fernanda? Hi, I'm Fernanda from Global Shapers Community. I come from Guatemala. Um, actually, I want to thank for this opportunity that you're like uh, bringing this uh, uh, theme here because it's so important. Um, I'm actually also, uh, besides a Global Shaper, uh, I come from the um, uh, po uh, Fratelli Tutti Political School, uh, which I'm really proud of uh, being part because it's a group of 15 young people of different religions and different countries. And more than a question, just like sharing this experience, because for me, it's like I have so much hope for this uh, community that is growing um, because we actually are really trying to reimagine politics, and we don't have the answer right now. After one year of uh, this formation in this program, we don't have the answer. But what we know is that when we come together, these young people that are from different religions, different traditions, um, we have become really close friends. And we believe that like working together and listening to each other is the start of building something different. Um, I really believe that we don't know how to be human, even though we are humans, uh, because uh, when we start like uh, being more greedy and wanting more power, uh, we stop being human. So um, I think we are like in a learning journey right now with this uh, community. And, and what I think about solidarity uh, for the next years, and um, I'm, really, um, I'm a really hopeful person, so, and I'm really optimistic. But I need that we as human, um, and especially with young people, we need to teach uh, people to also learn how to deal with pain. Because sometimes pain is the catalyst for making like really wrong decisions or really uh, good decisions. Uh, and that's why we see so many people like, t like bring in their pain and uh, using it for power, but for, to oppress other people or to serve other people. And that's for me like, uh, that's like a really important uh, thing that we need, also need to discuss the, the, about pain, how we deal with pain and how we deal with the pain of the other. Because the, re the reality is that the problems right now that we deal in poverty, inequality, it's because it's pain in the people. And we don't know how to handle that. We only have these uh, huge answers that I think is good, but it's not enough. And that's why the war is fragmented, because we also are fragmented inside of us. So thank you. Fernanda, thank you for that comment. I think the when you bring up pain, it also brings a uh, uh, another facet of solidarity, which solidarity means feels feeling others' pain, and that is uh, that's a commitment, and that takes courage. Another word that we've been hearing here. So, Steen J, I saw you had a comment. Yeah, just wonderful. Thank you so much for bringing that. Um, as a politician, my most effective strategy actually was listening, because if you really listen, then you also understand why there are opposing positions in a given debate. And often those opposing positions are based on something which is not so irrational, which is not so... So if you try to understand what is right in what the other is trying to bring, then you can also find the right solutions. So I'd love to connect that to what you were saying on education. I hope in 10 years we'll be talking about maximizing the human potential, right? Because uh, that means looking at what each and every one of those 10 billion people can bring and how we can, how we can optimize the use of that. Can you imagine what we could achieve if we really optimize the capabilities, the talents of people around the world? Um, and so education is absolutely key for that. And a second thing, which I really hope, and WRI is actively very much working on that, is to help people to be agents of their own future in the sense of giving them procedural equity. So it's like a very theoretical term, but it actually means that we provide indigenous people in the Amazon with data on where illegal logging is taking place so that they can take that to their local uh, communities and actually say, hey, this is happening, stop this, right? Enabling people to become, to have more procedural equity, to become part of the decision-making about their own lives in their own context. I think that's also something where we should really try to improve things. So. 
uh, hopefully we'll have concluded in 10 years that that's all been arranged. Um, uh, and I also hope there'll be more hope again in 10 years, right? Um, we're a bit daunted now, every now and then, with all the poly crisis, all the changes that we see happening. But we need that hope. And I hope that in 10 years we will say, we see the future, we know how, I mean, there's still a lot of implementing, we know how to do it, the spirit is right. So I hope that will be a conclusion in 10 years here at Davos. Yes, Aza. Brilliant and very inspiring. And thank you so much for that intervention about pain and, and you're very nice actually highlighting that pain helps us become more sensitive and solidarity is about sensing and acting on one another's pain. Three really important points. 10 years from now, if Davos is still operational, it would be very good to make sure that we are looking at a number of a sea of brown faces from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, who are actually sharing stories of their successes, um, as well as their trials and tribulations. But I'd like to see this space as much more ethnically, racially, and, and diverse and intergenerationally as well. And I think this has to happen if this space is to continue to serve, because we have so much to learn from one another. And we certainly, ha I think the pendulum has swung and some of us are resisting it. But we have a lot to learn from Africa. We have a lot to learn from Asia. We have a lot to learn from Latin America. And these parts of the world have a lot to learn from each other. Um, and Europe has a lot to learn from all of them, so and North America. So I think it's important that we realize that the education, absolutely, but it's also about from whom are we getting our education. And I think we need to start looking to the global south, not as a space of trouble and problem, but as a space of hope and opportunity and creativity and solutions. And that is what I hope what Davos would be in 10 years, with different leadership that is in itself multi-ethnic and multi-religious and so on. But I would also want to see the space as a place where different youth from different religious come and share their stories and experiences about how they're working together um, from different parts of the world, but they're united in, the, in solidarity working on these different issues. So that the voices that are largely at the table here are the voices of youth that are instructing as they are listening. Because I think one of the things about being able to listen is we tend to think it's a one-way thing. You just, one person listens to this person when in the context of youth, it's about the, the intergenerational responsibility. So the young people also have a responsibility for the elderly. And as the elderly have a responsibility towards the young, it's not a one-way thing. It never is a one-way thing. One point about faith organizations we t and, and institutions in particular that Shelley, you brought, which is extremely important. Yes, um, I began by saying institutions are struggling to cope, all kinds of institutions, and their legitimacy is being severely questioned and undermined. None more so than at the global level, inter, intergovernmental, multilateral, I was like, what is that about? Here's the thing. The work of Religions for Peace is not the work of the Catholic Church and the work of the Protestant churches and the work of the Muslim or whatever. The work of Religions for Peace is about all of them together. And there is no one institution for that. And that's where the dynamic the pulse for change and transformation is possible because it's not institutionalized in any one entity, but it invites from all different entities, including indigenous people, to be able to do, to work together. And that is the trick. And remember, there was something called an Arab Spring, which has now turned into God knows what. Um, but there was that transformation that took place. And it was amazing. And beyond it was the question, well, what now? We know what we don't want but we don't necessarily know what's supposed to come after. And then we have to go back to the institutions that we have that we were already not so trustful of. What next? And I think the point about intergenerational, gender diverse and intersensitivity, the whole thing is about saying we can keep the institutions and continue to reform them, all of them, but work together and work across them to do so. I have a sign to stop. <laughs> And since we're coming close to the end, what I'd like to do is a thought exercise for all of us, and I'll ask our, our panelists to be verbal on this, is to reflect upon this quote uh, from Dr. Martin Luther King in the United States. We celebrated his birthday on Monday. And Dr. King said, history has thrust something upon me from which I cannot turn away. I want us to all think about what is history thrust upon us that we cannot turn away from. And this can be small or large. I will say I've picked up some wonderful words through this session. Uh, grace, courage, 
recklessness, building trust. And I will start, and then I'll go to our panel and ask each of you in the audience to, to think uh, what history has, has thrust upon you. And I'm asking for a one-sentence answer. So I will say the challenge to build a wider we. And Steen Jay, I'll go to you. The challenge to create a system in which 10 billion people can live on a finite planet. Shelley. The imperative to save the planet. And Aza. The golden rule, to do unto others what we would like done unto us. Wonderful. Well, again, I thank all of you for joining us this morning and for helping us plant a seed of a conversation around solidarity and for engaging in this act of solidarity today. And thank you, panelists, so much for being open in, in so many ways and bringing this discussion forward. Thank you.